I got married when I was 31 and I just felt like I got left behind. And that season of singleness just felt really lonely. Like, mm -hmm. to be brutally honest, it sucked. Yeah, it was hard. There's always ebbs and flows. There's always high tops and low valleys where sometimes yeah. you're just really content for a while and sometimes just really lonely and wanting yeah. and desiring that marriage. But we're just really hoping that we can encourage you today with some things that helped us. So these are our two secrets to conquering loneliness in the season of singleness. The number one thing that helped me was get my heart and my mind right about marriage. To that, God showed me that I was already in the best love story that I will ever have throughout my whole life. Yeah. And that was my love story with God. And nothing can compare to my love story with God. Nothing can compare to Him finding me and saving me and rescuing me and loving Amen. me. And nothing can compare to spending time with Him. And once I realized I've already got the best thing I'll ever have, yeah, it didn't discourage me. It encouraged me because the best thing is, was then, is now, and will be my whole life. I think we often look as marriage as our savior to make mm -hmm. us whole and healthy instead of Jesus as our savior to make us yeah. whole and healthy. And it, it's finding our wholeness in him before anything else. Yeah, and it's not to say that Christians, as Christians, we're not trying to yeah. pursue God. Like, that's not what we're saying. But it's not to idolize marriage so much that your life in yeah. singleness feels like a waste. Yeah. Feels like purposeless feels painful and lonely. That's not what God desires for us. And of course, things that are struggles in our life draw us closer to Him sometimes, and so He'll use those things to draw us closer to Him. But He doesn't want us to stay there for the whole season. I think that's, a, that's easier advice to give now that we're married, because if I, if I was single hearing that, I'd be like, gosh, like, what are you saying? I want to be married so yeah. bad. Okay, just kick me while I'm down. Like, I have this godly desire and dream, mm -hmm. and it just burns within me to mm -hmm. be married. But your advice is so true. Like, it's well, so needed. I think we have to discover it for ourselves. Yeah. You can't just take my word for it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you have to hear that from God yourself. Yeah. And know that, okay, he's going to write your love story better than Jane Austen, better yep. than Hallmark. Like, he has the best love story if we just follow in what he yeah. has for us. And we got to trust him. Advice number two is super practical. For me, it was finding community mm -hmm. because the sense of loneliness in this season was amplified when I wasn't in community. When you see your friends out on the town on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, and you're home alone, it just amplifies the sense of loneliness. And so finding a group of friends that you can run after Jesus with is mm -hmm. so critical. You need friends where you can let your hair down, all the hair that I have, <laughs> you know, and just be yourself, laugh, play games, mm -hmm. have a fun time. Yeah, make time for people in your life. Make yeah. time for friends. It's important to have people pouring into you, single, dating, married, yep. all of it. It's never going to end. That, that part of your life is never going to stop, never going to yeah. stop being important. And so it's super important to start it now. When I dated in the past, I didn't focus on other friendships. I didn't focus on other relationships yeah. in my life. And so when those relationships fizzled mm. and when the breakups came, I was alone. Yeah. That was the most lonely part of my life. I had to rebuild my community after those events and thankfully I did and thankfully you were so big on having community yeah. in our dating relationship. It was just so much healthier. This idea is so critical because when you have community before you date, then you can date mm -hmm. in community, yeah. Yeah. and that's what should happen. And that's a red flag you can look for, is if you do start dating somebody and they yeah. draw you away from your community, that's a red flag. You know that something's <laughs> wrong. Something else that I really tried to do was I didn't stop planning. Oh. I didn't stop living the next step. I was planning yep. for the next step. I was looking at places to rent with my friends. I was looking at places I could afford on my own. I was getting jobs I still you know, is seeking God for the next step. What is the next step even though I'm single and I desire to be married, I desire to be a mom, I desire to have a family, but that doesn't stop my life now. As a single, you don't wait for marriage to start your life mm -hmm. because marriage is the act of joining two lives together. So you start your life today, dream big, hope for mm -hmm. amazing things and lean into running this life with Jesus mm -hmm. and making a kingdom impact now because you need more than passion 
to have a sustained marriage. You need purpose. And so if you find your purpose in Jesus while you're single, then you can find your purpose together when you get married. So that's our two tips on conquering loneliness in the season of singleness. It's Christ in community helps you be content through all seasons of life. As simple as that. Even though it's not always simple. <laughs>